how big do you think Africa really is? It's a simple question with a not so simple answer. You see, most of the maps we're familiar with use the Mercator projection, a mapping technique developed in the 16th century. While it's great for navigation, it's not so great for accurately representing the size of continents. This projection distorts the size of objects as the latitude increases from the equator to the poles, causing Africa, which straddles the equator, to appear much smaller than it truly is. In reality, Africa is immense, significantly larger than it appears on most maps. Consider this. The landmass of Africa is so vast that it can comfortably accommodate the United States, China, India, and a substantial chunk of Europe all within its borders. That's a vast expanse of deserts, forests, savannas, and mountains all in one continent. So, the next time you look at a map, remember, Africa is a lot bigger than you think. Ever thought about where one ocean ends and another begins? Well, it's not as clear-cut as you might think. You see, the concept of separate oceans is more of a human construct than a geographical reality. Yes, we have names like the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and Southern Oceans. But in reality, these are not distinct bodies of water. They're all interconnected, flowing into one another without any definitive borders. This vast body of salt water covering about 71% of Earth's surface is, in fact, one global ocean. The notion of separate oceans comes from our need to categorize and navigate the world, but it can sometimes lead to misconceptions about our planet's geography. When we think of oceans as separate entities, we overlook the interconnectedness of our world's waters and the ecosystems they harbor. So, it turns out we're all just sailing on one big ocean. Is Mount Everest really the tallest mountain on Earth? Now here's a plot twist for you. We're all familiar with the majestic Mount Everest, towering above the world with its peak piercing the sky at an impressive altitude above sea level. But let's talk about a different measure of tallness. Enter Mauna Kea, a Hawaiian mountain that doesn't quite reach Everest's lofty heights, when measured above sea level. However, if we look below the ocean's surface, Mauna Kea extends a mind-boggling 20,000 feet downward, making its total height from base to summit over 30,000 feet. That's taller than Everest's height from base to summit. So while Everest may hold the title for the highest peak above sea level, Mauna Kea quietly claims the title for the tallest mountain when measured from base to summit. It's a classic case of there being more than meets the eye. So Everest might have the highest altitude, but it's not the only tallest mountain out there. Can you really see the Great Wall of China from space? This is a question that's been asked and answered countless times, yet the myth persists. Let's set the record straight. Contrary to popular belief, the Great Wall of China is not visible from space with the naked eye, not from the moon, not from low Earth orbit. This misconception might stem from the fact that the Great Wall is indeed, well, great. Spanning over 13,000 miles, it's an impressive feat of human engineering. But despite its length, the wall is less than 30 feet wide on average, hardly a standout feature from miles above Earth's surface. Even astronauts have confirmed this. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, who spent five months aboard the International Space Station, said it best, the Great Wall of China is not visible from orbit with the naked eye. It's too narrow, and it follows the natural contours and colors. So if you ever find yourself in space, don't strain your eyes trying to spot the Great Wall. Are all deserts scorching hot? The answer may surprise you. It's a common misconception that all deserts are perpetually hot, a mirage of endless heat waves and sand dunes. However, this isn't always the case. Take the Gobi Desert, for instance. Located in Asia, the Gobi is a prime example of a cold desert. During winter, temperatures can drop to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, a stark contrast to the blistering heat we often associate with deserts. Why is this so? It's all about moisture, or rather, the lack of it. Deserts are defined by low precipitation, not temperature. This means that while deserts don't receive much rain, they can still experience a range of temperatures. At night, without cloud cover to trap heat, temperatures in deserts can plummet drastically. So, the next time you think of a desert, remember it's not just about the heat. So, not all deserts are hot. Some can give you quite the chill. Do you know the difference between weather and climate? This is a question that stumps many. Let's take a moment to unravel this seeming conundrum. When we talk about weather, we refer to the short-term atmospheric conditions we experience. Is it raining? Is it sunny? Is it windy? These are all questions about the weather, and they can change from one hour to the next, or from one street corner to another. Now, when we speak of climate, we're talking about the long-term pattern of weather in a particular area. It's the bigger picture, the weather's average over a long period of time, usually 30 years or more. It tells us what to expect. For instance, we associate the Sahara with heat and aridity, because its climate is predominantly hot and dry. 
So, in a nutshell, while weather can be as fickle as a leaf in the wind, climate is more like the steady tree from which the leaf falls. So, weather is what you get, but climate is what you expect. Is Iceland really icy, and Greenland really green? Now there's a question that has puzzled many a geography enthusiast. It seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? But the reality is quite the opposite of what you'd expect based on their names. Let's take a trip to Iceland first. This Nordic island nation, despite its chilly sounding name, is quite green. Especially in the summer months, the lush landscapes and vibrant flora create a verdant paradise that belies its frosty moniker. Now let's hop over to Greenland. This autonomous territory within the Kingdom of Denmark, contrary to its verdant name, is largely covered by an ice sheet. In fact, more than three quarters of Greenland's land area is enveloped by the world's second largest body of ice. So, it seems that the names Iceland and Greenland are a bit of a misnomer. A geographical irony, if you will. So, don't let their names fool you. Iceland is more green, and Greenland is more ice. And so, we've come to the end of our whirlwind tour of geographical misconceptions. We've journeyed from the real size of Africa through the one global ocean, up the deceptive heights of mountains, along the mysterious lengths of the Great Wall of China, endured the paradoxical desert temperatures, distinguished between weather and climate, and finally, unraveled the misleading names of Iceland and Greenland. It's been quite the adventure, hasn't it? But remember, geography isn't just about memorizing facts and figures. It's about questioning what we think we know and exploring the world to uncover the truth. So, what other geographical misconceptions have you come across? We'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. And remember, the world is full of surprises, and geography is no exception. So keep exploring, keep questioning, and who knows what amazing discoveries you might uncover next. Until next time, happy exploring.